Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black entrepreneur experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Frances Richards. Our next guest is the communication expert you want on your team. She teaches women leaders and teams how to have positive and productive relationships at home and work using effective communication tools and strategies. Welcome, Monique Russell. Thank you, Dr. Francis. I'm excited for our conversation. I've given our audience such a brief bio. Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you'd like them to know about you and your business? Well, uh, from the time I was eight years old, I started my first, I had my first speaking engagement and I was speaking in front of an audience of a hundred or more at church. And that was the beginning of my journey into the work of communication skills, teaching, training, being seen. I was groomed to be seen. And I left that beautiful island of the Bahamas after graduating high school, moved to Minnesota to continue to pursue my studies in communication skills development. Years later, I found myself with three degrees, two graduate degrees and an undergraduate in broadcast journalism, the other two in advertising and public relations. And that led me on my journey of finding my job, my next job, international broadcast journalist. I wish I could tell you that that's the way it went, but it didn't. <laughs> it didn't. Um, I actually started working in Fortune 500 companies and executive support learning and seeing behind the scenes how leaders worked, what got them stressed out, what made them seem to be authentic, what made them seem to be respected. And I was often called in for a lot of advice on how to connect with people in their team, how to connect with people that were their peers. So that journey really led me to what I am doing today. Working in the corporate America, I was not feeling fulfilled. I wasn't using my true gifts in the way that I wanted to use it. So I started freelancing and that freelance happened in 2008. I didn't know, you know, anything about starting a business or, you know, had any strategic intention about starting a business. I was just freelancing and that brought me joy. So what the audience really, I uh, want you to know is that my business is focused on fostering connection, connection amongst your audience. And that audience is, can be your family members, it can be your children, your parents, it can be your clients, it can be your peers in your corporate environment, and it can be your leaders. Talk about um, the pandemic and fill in the blank. Thank you, pandemic, because. Thank you, pandemic, because you have helped to accelerate the learning and the teaching of self-awareness, of slowing down, of reflection and shifting perspective in a way collectively that no other disaster or challenge could have done so. Thank you, pandemic, for allowing all of us, the collective, to truly stop and pause and think about the value of what life is for each one of us to help us redefine success more out of who we are rather than what it is that we do. You talked about leadership. What type of leader? What is your leadership style? I believe leadership is a lifestyle. It's who we are and who we're constantly developing into. It's being aware. Everything starts with awareness. Um, there's a lot of people that are talking about leadership with a lot of fluffy quotes and you know, just empty promises. And quite frankly, I think that we're now in a period where people are requesting more from their leaders in business. The trust index, Edelman's trust barometer is at an all time low, we are dealing with fake news, we're dealing with, you know, social media highlights where people are feeling they're missing out, they're not keeping up, they don't have value if they don't have jobs. There's a lot of distrust currently in the atmosphere. And so I believe that when we are executing um, and embodying true leadership, we are being genuine. We are showing up online and offline in congruency and in alignment. 
I believe we're understanding not just our communication skills, but we're understanding our patterns of how we make decisions, how we make decisions in our relationships, how we make decisions with the foods we eat, how we make decisions with our finances. Leadership starts with self-awareness, an honest, genuine assessment and reflection of how we make decisions and the patterns in our lives. You talked about starting your business in 2008 from a position of freelance. What is some advice you wish you knew before starting your business, Monique? I wish I knew what business was all about. <laughs> Freelancing doesn't give you any foundation. And I have so many entrepreneurs in my family. But the challenge with that is a lot of people don't take the time to sit you down in your family, well, in my family, and say, hey, this is what business is about. This is what I've learned. This is what I want you to avoid. You just know that, okay, uncle so-and-so has this, uncle so-and-so has that, auntie so-and-so does this. But to say, peel that curtain, go behind the scenes I wish that someone had sat me down and said, hey, these are the frameworks. These are the structures that you need to have in place. Uh, this is how you need to take care of your finances. This is how you need to take care of your legal issues. You know, just that whole piece. Freelancing is, is great. Don't get me wrong. It's great to get started and have fun and find out what you're good at, what you're not good at, what you want to do. Uh, but I wish I had actually had that uh, structure and understanding. And I wish I had started investing in coaching much sooner than I had. So what are three truths that you have found out in business that you want to share? Well, I found out that number one, being a business owner is like being in a marriage. It is all about your self-awareness, your level of confidence, and basically your existing skill set. So if you don't have the tools to go out and do sales, to do your negotiations, you know, if you don't have tools to set boundaries, whether that's in business or in your relationship, you're not going to be able to be as effective. So that's number one, just really <laughs> one big truth I've learned. Um, another truth that I've learned is that, you know, business isn't always about everything being peachy. It's about cycles. Um, you might have summer and spring and, and things are going well, and you may have winter and fall, and you need to be able to understand that when winter and fall comes, it's not, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? Why can't I figure this thing out? It's just a natural part of business as clear as the sun coming up each and every day. It's like, you know, we're, we're not going to say, well, the sun isn't going to come up tomorrow. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Or it's raining tomorrow. The sun didn't come out today. No, we know that it can rain and it can shine. So that's the second uh, truth. The third truth I'll say is, you know, the goal that you have for your business really needs to be personal. You have to design Design your business according to the lifestyle that you choose for long lasting fulfillment and sustainability. A lot of times you get in and you say, okay, these are the metrics or success metrics of what uh, successful business owners are like. You can easily get caught up into the media or the highlights or what others deem as successful. And then if you're not meeting those standards, top 40 under 40, top 50 under 50, or, you know, 30 under 30, if you're not meeting those standards, you might find yourself feeling like you're not successful as a business owner. So the third truth is business success must be personalized and individualized. And how do you define success, business success? Business success is being able to enjoy the clients that I'm working with to look forward to uh, interacting with them and serving them. I'm learning from them each and every day, being able to work in my strength zone 80% of the time. Speaking and training is what I do. So in my business, when I'm doing that, I feel extremely successful. Being successful in my business also means that I have the freedom to choose if I need to change my schedule, if I need to take more time with my family, if I want to, you know, 
travel to a new location, it gives me that opportunity to be able to do that. And being successful means that I have more than enough. I have I have my uh, business expenses, my business goals, my financial goals met and more. So I'm comfortable. Give, get. What do you want to give and what do you want to get? And that's just in general. Yeah. It's how you define it. Okay. So what I want to give, I want to give empowerment. I want to give perspective shifting. I want to give women and men, most of the people that I work with are women, but I want to give the ability and the um, opportunity to shift perspectives so that we're not just limiting ourselves and how we view uh, a certain situation. And that's why my business is about communication, fostering those uh, connection opportunities. What I want to get, hmm, that's a good question I have to think about. Um, I would say I'll put it in some tangible terms. Uh, I want to get established in multiple countries, specifically um, within the African continent and the Caribbean to foster cross-cultural collaboration. So those are some of the things that I want to give. I also want to get um, innovative centers in those places where we are able to cultivate local talent through entrepreneurship because I believe that entrepreneurship is, is a gateway to a lot of opportunities. What problem exists in the world today that you would like to solve, Monique? I'd like to solve the problem of disconnection. Um, a lot of people, and I will tell you, this is a personal story for me, because when I grew up uh, in the Bahamas, I grew up with my mother, I grew up with my two brothers and my stepfather. And I felt for a long time that there were two families in one. And as I grew older, I met my biological father when I was eight years old, and then getting acclimated to his family, to his culture, also from Nigeria, was another thing that I felt I needed to learn how to connect. When I got into the corporate environment, learning how to find my positioning, learning how to navigate with others, I believe that connection is something that is uh, hard for many. It's, um, it's something that a lot of people long for when I work in my practice with my clients. I hear that all the time. And so the problem of connection exists because effective communication is not happening. And that's the problem that I'm solving today. I want you to have a monologue. I want you to name this person living or not. And this person has inspired you so much. Name the person and what are you saying to that person? <laughs> oh. Okay. Hey, Bob, what's up? What's up? What's up? Come on. Listen, you are so inspiring. Man, how did you even determine that you were going to be a trailblazer? You have just blazed some trails, man. You could go anywhere in the world and people will hear your music. They know what you stand for. They know that you embrace unity. You 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 foster love. You foster abundance. But you also, listen, you don't play no games though because people know they can't mess around with you. So <laughs> how did, did you even get, get to this place? How did you get to this place? Tell me some of the things that you've gone through. I want to know how did you deal with those haters, those people that were coming from you? you know, coming for you, you had to leave your country, you know, that's where you got your big break, but literally you could go anywhere and people are dancing to your music. They're dancing to one love. They're dancing to your vibes, to your legacy. Just talk to me about that. And that's Bob Marley. Speaking of legacy, when it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? Well, I am living my legacy right now. Everything that I do, every person that I touch, I am remembered as someone who 
shows up in the most genuine way. And I'll tell you what people currently say right now about when they experience me is that they feel very connected. They feel positive. And so I'm currently living out my, my legacy. I'm remembered as someone who is a role model, who constantly grows, who learns how to live the fruits of the spirit and who teaches others who's able to shatter, um, shatter barriers. Yeah. And just talk thinking. Sorry about that. Talk about intentional motherhood. Intentional motherhood is a book that I wrote chronicling my journey of motherhood and also sharing stories about leadership. Intentional motherhood focuses on the concept and the notion that it's not about age or biology. It is about our identity, how we choose to view motherhood, how we plan for it or don't plan for it. And I share some of the tools that are applicable in motherhood and leadership based on my journey being a teenage mom the best teenage mom that you can ever find in the world and um, just really defying the odds where people thought things would fail. I not only fa- I only I not only succeeded, but I did it and I left a blueprint. I was be- being asked to teach and talk about my personal experiences. So I move through those topics and those chapters in the book. I talk about men who are living from their ego. I disrupt the myths about how to navigate with men driven by their ego, starting with my own father and the men in my life that I encountered. And I I just dispel those myths because a lot of men want to have connection. They just don't know how. I talk about practical tools for having meetings, fostering connection in your family, treating your family like a business. You plan for your business, you plan for your HR, you go ahead and have assessments, you have constant meetings, you delegate effectively. What would it be like if you were to think about your family as a business? Would your family be in a state where it could be sold or would it be in the negative? So I I just moved through that whole aspect of motherhood from a space of leadership through my personal experiences and stories and through the stories of some of my clients as well. If someone would like a copy of the book, Intentional Motherhood, how can they get it? You can get a copy on my book, on my website, moniquerussell.com, or you can go to amazon.com and purchase a copy there too. What is the best decision you've made as a leader? the best decision, Woo! investing in coaching and therapy, hands down, hands down, hands down, hands down, investing in coaching and therapy, because it helped me to really challenge the things that I did. And it helped me to have much, a much more expansive view of life and to learn about my own patterns So I wish I had done it before, (laughs) like early, early on, but hands down as a leader. And you know what? I actually, I was inspired to do that because when I was working in corporate America, supporting a lot of the executive leaders, I noticed, although back then it was sort of not the thing to do because you only hired an executive coach when things were going wrong, it was still sort of taboo, but I noticed that Um, executive coaches were being brought in to help leaders maximize their individual performance. And I'm like, you know what? Y'all got the title. I'm an executive too. So I'm going to do exactly what I see. (laughs) And I did. And so, yeah, best decision ever made. Talk about vetting a coach. How do you vet a coach? There's so many coaches out there. And I want you to talk specifically, Monique, to the, um, the woman business owner that is starting or even a a startup. And there are so many, like you said, titles, people with the coaching title and they, they've had one session and now they're, you know, they, they are brilliant at it. And I find you waste a lot of time and energy in some coaches because you don't really get the right investment. 
Yes. Oh gosh. I could talk about this all day. So, <laughs> so vetting a coach and I will tell you just from two recent experiences and then I'll share some um, additional examples. So recently I had a gentleman reach out to me who is looking for um, executive coaching and we walked through and talked through his, his challenges to identify if there were things that I would be able to help him with. And they were, I also encourage him to go and shop around, go look around because 80% of your success when you invest in a coach is based on rapport. If you meet that coach and there's something intuitively that is off, you want to pay attention to that because that's going to influence how you show up in your coaching engagement and your relationship. And you want to get the most out of your investment because it's not cheap. So he went around and he shopped around and he came back and he said, you know, you are more expensive than these three that I chose, um, but I feel like I need to work with you. And he said he needed to work with me because he felt that I could deliver on what it is that he needed. He was able to go and look at some of the work that I have placed on, on social media, on my website, my interviews. And it was confirming for him about the specialized knowledge and um, wisdom that I possess. So my next suggestion would be when you are vetting a coach to make sure that the thing that you're looking to grow and develop in Make sure that that coach is someone who has experience in that themselves. I have what, I don't know how many years of specialized training, teaching, coaching from the university level, from my own coaching experiences before I became a subject matter expert um, teaching at the university in this field of communication skills development. So look for the expertise, look for the wisdom, look for their body of work, their body of work in terms of, are they able to deliver in this area that I'm seeking? So look for rapport, look for the body of work, talk to some of the people that have given testimonials. There's nothing wrong with doing your due diligence. So talk to those folks and see if you know the experience was worth it. Also, I would say consume their content. If you're a new coach, there are a lot of scammers out here. So you want to consume their content. You want to look at how they show up online. What are they teaching? If they're on podcast interviews, if they've written a blog, if they're sharing social media content, if they have a newsletter, get on the newsletter and see how they're teaching, see what they're talking, see what their position is about and see if that resonates with what it is that you need. Also, when you're interviewing them, you want to ask them about their journey. A really great coach will be able to answer those questions. It's not, you know, like, why did you get into this industry or, you know, you know, what is your mission? Mission and all that stuff is good, but you want to know what was your journey like to being a communications coach? What was your journey like to being a finance uh, executive? What was your journey like to being a fitness instructor or wellness instructor, because if there's no journey in their story, they're just teaching you from a theoretical place, which some people may want that, but you could go and sign up for a university class to just get that information, in my opinion. So, um, and finally, I will also say, and this is a little biased because, you know, this, this may or may not be a criteria that you use, but I will say, you want to look at the customer experience. A lot of coaches are operating from that, I got to get you, I got to get you, I got to get you. And they're not able to tell you what they can and cannot do. A good coach will tell you, that's not in my wheelhouse. Here's someone else that I can recommend. A good coach will not be able to tell you, okay, I can do all things and help you with everything. Um, they will be able to tell you, this is what I can do. This is my area of expertise. These are the people that I typically work with and what they come to me for. These are the typical outcomes that they experience. So you want to make sure that you're looking at that whole customer experience. How responsive are they when you are reaching out? Do they feel feel excited when you reach out initially, but if you decide that you want to go a different direction, the attitude shifts, like that's not a great business prefer professional. That's business. It's not just about coaching, but yeah. So I, for me, 
I would say when I look to invest in someone, and I recently did this as well, I go through all of these steps. I look at how they respond to questions that I have because questions are questions. And if you feel like I'm threatening you, or if you feel like, oh, you're asking too much questions, just do what I say, um, then maybe that's not the right person for me because the people that I work with, the people that I play with, they operate at a high level of excellence and they're not afraid to have questions come at them. I know that was a lot. <laughs> that was wonderful. The word is play. How did you play today or how will you play today? Oh, I already played because there was a song. What's his name? Um, oh gosh, what's his, what's the name? There was a song that I played this morning during my morning meditation. It the title is called um, "It's a Beautiful Day," and I don't remember who. I can tell you who who's the um, the artist, but I oh I don't I I I have to pull it up and tell you, but. It's a beautiful day. It's a it's a really great song. It was a good beat. And I played it at least four or five times in my house as I was getting ready. I was dancing. My husband was looking at me like I was crazy. So I already played today. I'm going to continue to play because I'm meeting with a, a friend where I'm nurturing a relationship. We are doing a holiday meetup and I'm looking forward to just having a good time. You talked about your husband briefly, shout out to your husband, marriage, motherhood, managing a business. Talk about mental wellness. Mental wellness is critical. And that's why coaching and therapy is something that I highly recommend, highly recommend, especially for the woman business owner. Um, you know, it's, it's not that hard to be honest with you. It's really not that hard. I think there's a narrative that floats around that tells us that it's supposed to be hard, that you're supposed to feel overwhelmed and you're supposed to feel like, oh my God, do those moments come? Yes. But those should not be the standards or, or the operating, uh, manual from which we need to operate from, Marriage, motherhood, you know, managing a business require the same tools. Where the chaos some uh, happens is when we aren't aware. We aren't aware of how we're making decisions and showing up in our marriage. We're not expressing ourselves. And I've experienced all of these, and this is why I can teach from it so confidently. Uh, we're not expressing ourselves and our true desires. We're not actually um, calling out things that are concerning or disruptive. We're not saying how we truly feel or setting aside time to express and have those moments. And we're not building a community around us. Sometimes it's isolating. We're not building that community and you need a community that will support you in your marriage relationship in your motherhood relationship and in your business relationship. A lot of times we think one community is supposed to be this, the end all catch all for everything. And that's not the case. I have a spiritual community, I have a motherhood community, I have a business community, and they all serve a different purpose. In the beginning, because I was so driven, well, I am very self-driven Sometimes I found myself working way too much and it's always like, okay, I'm going to be done. It's six o'clock. Just one more email, just one more thing. The next thing you know, it's 11 o'clock. And I remember when my oldest son, he's 22 right now, he must've been, I don't know, 13 or so. And uh, he said, he wrote me a birthday card and he, in the card, I opened it and he said, happy birthday, mom. He said, you work so hard like a boss. You need to learn to rest like a boss. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. And I was like, oh, here I am thinking that I'm saying these things, but my behavior and my actions are not lining up with the true values that I'm saying I believe in. And that was a awakening moment for me. So I really had to get super, super intentional. I had to put out the intention in the atmosphere. I had to let everybody in the house know, hey, y'all, I need help. Like mommy needs some help. 
Like if you see me working and it's 630, like come and harass me, get up, mom. You said that you want to do this. You know, like I engaged everybody. I told my mom, I told my friends, if, if you message me and I said, I'm working, I need you to tell me, get up <laughs> and shut it down. So um, I did that and I set my intentions individually, but also, like I said, setting those goals through therapy and coaching um, and really helping me understand, like, why was I doing that to my body? Why was I doing that? Why did I feel I needed to do that? To say that, you know what, I'm working. Um, executing and working was never a problem for me. Learning how to rest was. Becoming Monique Russell, how did you become? I became because I decided, I decided to really use all of the gifts and talents. I decided to learn more about myself, to sit with myself. One of the things that I used to do, and I am I'm having a visual in my mind in 2015, my goal list, I I remember one of the things on my list was going to a silent retreat or having an annual uh, meditative retreat. And through those retreats, you know, you get exposed to different thoughts and you get exposed to different practices. And in those moments, it really helped me to silence my mind and to think about really who do I want to embody? Who do I want to be? How do I want my life to be? Who do I want to embody? And it wasn't anybody that was external. It was extremely a spiritual experience. And I wanted to, and it's still my mission, to embody all the aspects of God. You know, patience and kindness and gentleness and love. And how can I embody those aspects if I don't know myself, if I don't know who I am or what I'm doing or why I'm doing it? So the journey of becoming Monique Russell, ooh, that sounds so powerful. I'm getting chills, Dr. Francis. <laughs> that journey is ongoing, but the foundation came through silence and moments of reflection and deeper understanding. Wow, that is powerful. When you talk about the moment of silence and the moment of reflection, a lot of us find it painful and it can be to really sit with yourself. So I thank you for taking us there in terms of um, and talking about embodying even the attributes of, of Christ and, and to be more like him. That was, that was wonderful. What's on the horizon for the next year? On the horizon, I'm excited. So every year, and I've learned this practice about five years ago um, from Chris Brogan, actually. And he had mentioned a new way of setting intentions for his year. I have goals, but I also use this, this practice. And it was um, setting three words. So my three words for next year are community, travel, and assets. And those three words, they all have a reason that I've chosen them, but they also help me in making decisions throughout the year. So when opportunities come up, I can run it through my three words. Are these connected to my intentions for the year? Are they connected to my desires? Is this an opportunity or a person that will help me to contribute to community or to support a community or to be in community or to travel? Or to, or to generate and build assets? And if the answer is no, then it makes it much easier for me to make decisions. I don't have to call and, and write down or think about, should I do it, should I do it? So on the horizon for next year is a lot of opportunities for me to be in community. Um, a lot of opportunities to travel. I already have a few places on my list, a few tickets booked, you know? And so I'm looking forward to experiencing Again, Dubai for the fourth time, 
um, Rwanda for the first time, Trinidad for the first time, my course, my beloved, the Bahamas, um, and who knows what else will pop up for me. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm also looking forward to focusing more to B2B um, businesses and helping them to navigate the new trends and to navigate the current work workplace, helping the leaders to be seen as more credible, to be more genuine in their communications and to really learn how to listen to the employees and hear their voices. So that's an area I'm excited to help um, consulting organizations, technology organizations, and innovative organizations that are looking for strategic business communications advisory. The word is listening. What is that resounding sound or message that your generation is saying we should be listening to? Listening to our, ourselves first, um, intuitively, to be able to have that wisdom and discernment. A lot of folks in my generation, I mean, well, the people that I tend to hang out, out with, you know, we're, we're constantly growing. Um, and so we should be paying attention to the different dynamics of multiple generations in the workforce. We should be paying attention to the younger generation. You know, in my household, I have well, four generations in my household. Um, my, my oldest son doesn't live at home anymore. But I look at some of the things that they struggle with. And I look at the opportunities to learn from some of the openness and some of the um the way they embrace new opportunities, the way they're so focused on well-being and balance because they've seen their parents work overwork and burnout and they don't want to do that. So I think we should be really listening and paying attention to helping them to navigate day-to-day -day experiences at home, at work especially, um, because when they're finished with their college degree, if they went to college, sometimes may, they may have trouble launching or starting starting a new job. And with the whole remote environment and starting working in a remote place, um, we might miss opportunities that might be more visible if they were um, in the office. We should be paying attention to help them navigate all the bombarding of imagery and messaging and media uh, that's coming at them from every angle. Tell a story around the most costly lesson that you've learned in life or business. When I first started uh, my business and I was in the freelancing space, I quickly partnered with someone who brought me on to a pretty large contract, a pretty large government contract. I was sub subcontracting and he was a subcontractor and we also had a prime ven vendor. We're doing excellent work. I was so excited, like, oh my God, you know, like, ooh, look at me. And uh, <laughs> just going into the meetings being able to share my learnings and, and contribute and see, see the impact of the suggestions that um, we were making, it was so fulfilling to be able to be in this space. And that's what really propelled me further into delving into my business. But there was about, we were about 18 months into this project and we got a call from the client and I was excited because I said, you know, they're going to be renewing this contract. They're going to talk about how good this thing was, you know. And so I got on the call. Um, I remember that day. It was a day I was driving. I actually was coming from Walmart and I had pulled into the driveway across the street. I just parked my car and I got on the call. My collaborative partner was actually out of the country. So he had to get on the call too. And we were there and I'm just sitting in my car and listening. I take a lot of calls in my car sometimes because I'm on the move 
And, and they were talking and they were asking these questions about, you know, we're, we are now 18 months into this project. We understood where all of the billing and things that, you know, Monique was doing in the beginning on the project, but now we're coming towards the end and we're just kind of wondering what are these two people doing because we're sort of phasing out. So I was sitting there and I'm just listening because, you know, I was, I, I just planned to listen. I actually didn't even plan to talk. And as I listened and I listened to the prime vendor responding and jumping in to answer questions, I noticed that they made up two people that they were billing for because nobody was working on that part of that project with me. And so as I heard that on the call, I started going crazy. I was like, what is going on? Like, do I, do I? just bust out and be like, first of all, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, you know, <laughs> I started thinking about everything. I started thinking like, if I say something, are we going to have to pay? I'm, I'm going to have to pay everything back. You know, if I say something, is it going to mess up my future opportunities to work with this company? Is it, you know, like, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? I, and then I was so upset with the prime vendor because, you know, you don't get to see what they're billing the client. So I was having a whole meltdown internally with thinking about what do I do? What do I say? What do I do? What do I say? And let me tell you, Dr. Francis, let me tell you what I say. I said nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's like the voice, my voice was frozen. Nothing came out. Nothing could come out. And I just sat there and I listened I listened to my business partner interject and was saying something. And it was like, I was just hearing this fall. Woo, 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 woo. And, and then we hung up from the call and I sat in my car and I said, why didn't you say anything? Like, why didn't you say something? And I sat there probably for like 30 minutes, just processing what just happened. And after I finished processing, I called my business partner and I just went in a frenzy because it seemed like he knew what was going on, but I was the only one that wasn't aware of it. And that just made me realize, I, I really did some introspection and reflection on that. And I said, okay, where else in my life am I not really speaking up? It led me down a whole new journey, a whole new path. And all the things that I was afraid of happening, it happened anyway. Didn't get renewed on a contract. I, um, the, the times when I were reaching out to the people that we were working with, they wouldn't respond to emails, wouldn't respond to phone calls. I was afraid of that happening and it did happen. I didn't work with that prime vendor ever again. It just didn't happen. It just could not, we just couldn't, finish. The trust was broken. And so that was a very costly lesson for me. But the good news is that organization is now my client. In 2022, that client became a clear communication solutions client not a subcontractor, not a sub subcontractor, but I'm working directly with that organization. Obviously not the same department or not the same people, but I'm back in business. <laughs> that is a great story. Thank you for sharing that. Monique, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself? I want you to ask the question and answer it. That's really good. If I was doing this interview, I would ask myself, how important, how important is having your family support to the success of your business? 
How important is that? And I will answer that question by saying it's critical that you have your family support because it will take you to levels that you may not imagine achieving. However, however, if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have the support of your family, you don't have the support the way you want them to support you, I want you to know it's possible. It is possible to achieve your goals and it is possible to be successful in business. And here's why. You have to be able to shift your perspective, knowing and understanding that all the cards will not be exactly the way you need it to be on the table. And I personally experienced this, where I felt members of my family weren't supporting me in the way that I needed that support. I held that story for a long time. If, you know, only if I had this, only if I had that, other people might have had this, other people might have had that. I didn't have it, but I kept pushing forward. I kept moving through my obstacles. I, I sought out external solutions, coaching, groups, mentors, counselors. And I will say that, I mean, I'm in a place today where I have the full support of my family members, those that I want to have that that support, but I didn't always have it. And for those, especially women business owners who feel like you need to have all these things in place in order to achieve or uh, be successful, you don't uh, because you already are successful. You're doing something that a huge part of the population are too afraid to try. And as an entrepreneur, you're already opening up the gateway to developing more skills, to learning how to be a better leader. If you open yourself to it and you allow yourself to receive the lessons. So that's what I would say to anybody that's listening. If they find themselves in that situation, yes, when you have that full support, you'll be able to accelerate. But sometimes you might not have that. And if you're in a season or a period where you don't, know that you can find that support outside. We've come to the part of our interview. It's called the rapid round of fun. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I want you to give me very quick answers. If there's something you desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Are you ready for the rapid round of fun? Yes. What is your comfort food? Salad <laughs> with seafood in it. <laughs> the last movie you saw? The Woman King. Wait, no, Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever, yeah. You relax doing what? Reading. Your favorite singer or rapper? Lauren Hill, Burna Boy. Your favorite dance song? Dance song, anything Afrobeats. What food do you eat every week, no matter what? A salad every week. Your ideal car? Ooh, I don't have one. <laughs> Your favorite holiday? Um, summer time. Oh, holiday, holiday, holiday. Um, ooh, I don't know. I don't have a favorite holiday, <laughs> but I'd say Christmas. <laughs> Monique Russell, thank you so much for joining us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Before we let you go, share with our audience the best way for them to connect with you and to do business with you. And feel free to leave all your social media handles. Yes, you can connect with me by visiting clearcommunicationsolutions.com or moniquerussell.com. You can also check me out on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn, Monique Russell, Clear Communication Coach. Listen to my podcast, Bridge to You. Um, you can email me directly. You can call the office, 706-963-0322. And I am happy to help you on your business journey. Thank you, Monique. That is a wrap. Thank you so much, Dr. Francis. I had so much fun.